Ghana is endowed with a lot of mineral resources. The major minerals that we produce are gold, diamond, manganese, and bauxite. In terms of gold, Ghana is the second largest producer in Africa and also ranked 10th in the world. In 2017, for example, gold production amounted to over 2.81 million ounces. Manganese, we produce about 3 million tons diamonds. Over 68,000 carats were produced. If you calculate the total revenue that we generated in the sector in 2017, about 2.16 billion Ghana cities was accrued from the sector to the state. Bakwansoye Municipal Assembly is endowed with some mineral resources which include gold and manganese and for that reason it is a host to multinational companies like Anglo Gold Ashanti, Gold Force Ghana Limited and Ghana Manganese Limited. mining company in Ghana to um, establish a foundation. It established the Goldfields Foundation in 2004 and it pays one dollar per every ounce of gold that it's, it's mined plus one percent pre-tax profit and then it creates this fund and I'm very proud to say that in all our host communities we've been able to establish schools, water facilities, sanitary facilities, health, uh, roads, scholarship. As we speak, the foundation has given about 1,300 and so um, scholarship to beneficiary um, and children from our uh, communities. Um, a mine like this situated in a populated area like Tapa, um, whether we like it or not, they are um, both um, a good and bad impact on the community. So my main task is to make sure that the mine brings good dividends to the people and also um, try to mitigate whatever um, negative um, impact that the operations may be having on the people. the sources of revenues that we get 
from the minerals and mining sector. It is only royalties that we have a framework for managing how the monies or the revenues trickle down to the communities. And this is being administered by the Minerals Development Fund Act 2016, Act 912. According to the Act, 80% of the monies goes to the Consolidated Fund, which is spent through the national budget every year. Out of the remaining 20%, half goes to the Office of the Administrator of School Lands, who manages these funds and ensure the paramountcy or the school um, takes 25%, the traditional council also takes 20%, then the district assembly also takes 55%. If you want to aggregate this, then you realize that from the royalties that you receive, only 4.95% goes to the district assembly. 1.8% goes to the traditional council, then 2.25% goes to the stew or the paramancy within the area that the minerals are being mined. Though we have the mineral varieties to support, or the MDF to also support the activities, it is not quite enough. If you look at the challenges of Takwa and Soye Municipal Assembly, there are so many. Due to the influx of people into the municipality for mining related activities, we have a higher population and this comes with demand for uh, many or more social infrastructure. With the busy nature of the, the place, we have bad roads. We have uh, big or long vehicles plying our heavy duty vehicles plying our roads and as I speak now all our roads are very poor, they are in a deplorable condition that we need to uh, work on them. on the community about the gold. Though they mine the gold here, yeah, but then I don't know what they really use the gold for in this community. So I would suggest that the, um, I mean the government should rather help so that they can really, really utilize the gold well in this community. Hey, I had a woman say, you to go to Apa, but good need to know who she do my beer and her, you who are the beer Obua community for now, Miss Amana was to do. Bibi and Wau Boa. It is a man said, I'm a name in Blaha, non boy, and not Edema, you go, you're not a son or a den money. It's true that some percentage come, but about ninety percent is being taken by the government. And I, I don't think it's, uh, they are treating us fairly because what is being extracted from our land. We must benefit and benefit them more from it. Not that a peanut is being given to the traditional authorities that uh, push 
the community forward or will rebuild the community to a level that we were all expecting. No. The stool represents the community. So a chief who sits on the stool must also be accountable to the community because the chief derives his power from the community. So it is imperative that chiefs are also accountable to their communities as to how much revenue that they receive from mineral royalties and what exactly they are using these revenues to do. Whether small or big, accountability is a key thing and that must be achieved. <laughs> when you talk to them, uh, they say that it, it is supposed to bath the stool. Some chiefs are doing well. I know some chiefs that um, give a lot of scholarships from the amounts they get. You know, uh, of course, some also buy more clothing and, and build uh, uh, more houses, uh, more cars, and so on. But again, it depends on the community, doesn't it? How do we hold our chiefs accountable? As for mining companies, we can't even interfere in this kind of thing because it is not for us to determine that kind of thing. I think the law that covers uh, stool lands and royalties and so on must be looked at again because I think it is time to have some kind of regulation about how the money should be used. People really want to see a better tapa, especially, let me see, if you talk about the municipal, the municipal capital that is tapa. They want to see a better tapa, they want to see other infrastructure development and uh, some social development as well. They really want to see that Takwa has gone far. Takwa becomes a model, looking at the kind of resources that the, the municipality is endowed with. So it's like they want us to, they need more than we have been able to do. So if you look at Prisia, Prisia, when the state gold mines was in operation, you could see how vibrant the community was. Now the state gold mining company is not operating anymore and you, you, you could see a semblance of a dying community. Recently, if you look at Obuasi, when Agro Gold Ashanti operations went down, the community almost turned into a ghost town. So it is important that we build a very good linkage between the local economy and the mining economy so that the mine, the, these communities will continue to try to thrive, even if there are no mining going on. The least number of years for mining may be about 20 years. So if mining is going to go into a community for 20 years, as a nation we should be able to envision what that community looks like in 20 years, given the fact that 20 years ought to be progressive towards development. You know, so when that goes into the thinking, they will be able to work with those who come and invest so that they, their understanding is also that, look, we're supposed to leave this community this way. What are the things we can do directly and indirectly to make sure that we even live a buoyant economy? It may not be a big economy like mining, but a buoyant economy that can sustain itself without mining and so usually when the mining companies are thinking of alternative livelihoods they are thinking of sustainable alternative livelihoods because as for mining one day it will end these resources are here we are exploiting them they won't come back again so future generations should be able to come 50 years to come 100 years to come and then see these pits and at least say that and um, because of these pits, we have a higher standard of education that a child who is born in Abekwase, it's sure, can be sure 
to have access to basic school can be sure to end up in, let's say, UMAT and come and work as a metallurgist here. If you look at how the law has been structured, you know, the law only takes care of only a fraction of the sources of revenues that we get from the sector. The monies that we get from corporate taxes, the monies that we get from grant rents, the monies that we get from um, environmental permits, the monies that we get from property rates, do not have clear guidance as to how this money is to be managed. It's only the royalties. Naturally, if mining companies had their way, government will even say, I received this quantum of royalty. I have paid it into the consolidated fund. Out of this same amount is what we're using to pay this and to pay that and to pay that and to pay that. It would give them comfort because then people will know that whatever they're paying is being used for everybody. That is not happening. So naturally, any transparency, you know, beyond what we have now, beyond Gaty, which says that, yes, they paid the right amount and so on. But Gaty does not go on to say that uh, when it went into the consolidated fund, this is what it was used for. It's not like that. Gaty wasn't set up for that kind of thing. So naturally, uh, as for mining companies, they would be more than happy to have specific things being attributed to the monies that they have paid. We need to widen the scope and have a comprehensive minerals revenue. Uh, we have a comprehensive mineral revenue management law, which will be a semblance of what we have in the petroleum sector, where all revenues that accrue to the states get into a holding fund and they are disbursed in an agreed ratio and also in proportions that aligns to the priorities of the citizenry, especially those who live in the mining communities and those who feel the most impact of mining. The 30% that we are proposing um, should be disbursed to support these local communities. We need to develop a mechanism to ensure that women become major beneficiaries of these revenues. This money should be channeled to ensure that it provides the necessary support for women who want to go into business, women who want to go into agriculture, women who want to go into commerce, or women who, if you want to learn some skills to, in order to improve their lives. At least about 50% of these monies that go to supporting people's livelihood should be targeted as women because they are the most vulnerable and they are most impacted by the impact of mining in these communities. communities, women do not own properties. And so if we talk about the revenue management fund, this could, this could be a way. It could be a way of, if there is no fund, the fund somehow 
acting as a guarantor acting as a guarantor for women who are interested maybe it can say that the woman should form a cooperative which is currently allowed under small scale mining but then the financing is not there so this is a, an opportunity where such ideas can and should be explored believe that in the, um, the revenue management should say specifically if there are community if there are committees to be formed we want women represented from the communities so they can voice out what they need they should be part of the decision making should there be a fund we feel that there should be a fund to support women it should state specifically maybe a woman mining fund and for people, for women in the communities to access this mining fund, they have to go through this particular training. And this training should be research, not just um, in technical skills. It should, be, it should include bookkeeping. It should include uh, marketing, so that it should be from mine to market. The chiefs of the mining are development partners with the government so if much is being given to the traditional authorities they will start projects if we government if they wanted to so that they can channel that money to a different thing altogether but what we get is payment even it is stated for the maintenance of this tool I have to put on clothes, everything I have to look nice. Manage the Inchiamifo and then other people within the INFI and so forth and so on. So look at the money that comes in. It's nothing to write home about. When I came into onto the stool, the police hasn't gotten their own base. So it's up on Something that we had, that we used to build the charge office and then the quarters that they are staying in at the moment. If something more had come in, we would have done much more better than what we've done now. A lot of people think that the mining company is there and should do everything. But I think that no matter how small some amount you get, if you are able to leave a legacy by choosing sustainable programs, that will benefit your community going forward. It will be good. We need to ensure that the revenues that come back into these communities are invested in the most productive sectors of the local economy. For example, if there is a bigger mining company, we can have a cottage industry which will, which will even supply activities carbon to feed the bigger mining company. This cottage industry can produce a lot of activated carbon and also provide jobs for the youth. They can also provide steel balls for the, um, the grinding mills of these companies. They can e even provide food services. They can provide clothing services for these companies. So all the services that these, community or these companies need that can be sourced locally should be sourced locally so that that will also cascade and also stimulates a better uh, local economic development for these communities so that their communities will still live on, their communities will still thrive even if the mines close down. <laughs>